Right, for bottling day you need your five gallon carboy full of beer and still has the stopper on there and everything. Um, I use the fermentation bucket for holding a little bit of sanitizer and the sponge which is used only for this process, um, you know, beer brewing, not for doing dishes but for just this. And you can see I've even got the bottle caps in there just to be safe soaking in the sanitizer. We've got our hydrometer. Even though I didn't take a reading before, we might be able to get some kind of an idea of uh, what the alcohol content is. And we've got our siphon. Now, every surface, every piece of equipment has been wiped down, washed, sterilized, everything. Um, all 48 of these bottles have been uh, through the dishwasher and scrubbed out with the wire brush, with the cleanser, and the sanitizer. Next step should be to get that liquid into that bottling bucket there. So again, everything has been wiped and cleaned and everything, so just keep everything nice and clean and sterile. So we're going to remove the stopper, the airlock, and that can just go in this bucket, and remove the stopper. Okay, I hope that had a good seal on there, it kind of felt a little loose, I thought I put it on there tighter than that. Okay, then take your siphon and make sure, make sure that you have this little cap on the end here. I can't explain exactly how it works, but this little cap right here um, helps with the siphoning process, so just make sure that that is on the bottom securely of the siphon. Okay, let's put that fat end of the siphon in there. I'll tell you what, I accidentally already put the bottling wand on the end of the siphon forgot that I had to get this into the bottling bucket first, so let me go ahead and take it off here. So I lift this up, push it down a little bit. Alright, for whatever reason this always seems to be a two-handed process. I uh, just kind of found a sweet spot when I was uh, pulling the siphon nozzle up and down. Notice it's down all the way, and this tube goes down and the bucket is lower than the carb away. I think that that helps it somehow. So we're going to let that drain in there until we have all five gallons inside of the bottling bucket. And again, remember, you know it's the bottling bucket because of the nozzle there. Um, what I'm going to do now is prepare the priming sugar. So maybe I'm just terrible at math, but I had some trouble with these instructions the first time. I don't know why they really even put this conversion here that one ounce of priming sugar is equal to two and a half tablespoons. You know, the step begins with, in a small saucepan, dissolve five ounces of priming sugar into two cups of boiling water for five minutes. This is a five ounce bag. So, unless you want to get it down to the molecule, you just pour the whole bag into the boiling water. This whole thing into two cups of boiling water, which is about to happen here. We are boiling, so I'm going to go ahead and pour the entire contents of the packet in there. So let that get back up to boiling again. Might want to stir it around a little bit to get even mixture. Five minutes. Boil it for five minutes and then you're going to pour it into the bottling bucket. So I kind of goofed on the instructions a little bit and forgot one thing that I'm going to need. Uh, so first thing is the priming sugar, once it's dissolved and boiled um, in that two cups of water, that should be going in there first. So it's that's not going to happen at this point, but uh, I do have the stirring stick, which you need either way, and I'm going to clean and sanitize that, and then this will help make sure that the sugar gets stirred really thoroughly throughout the mixture. And that is five minutes, 
So I'm going to pour this mixture of water and priming sugar in here. And what that'll do is help to carbonate it and I'm assuming finish up the fermentation process. So I'm not gonna go crazy stirring this, but I do definitely wanna make sure that it's mixed very well throughout here because I was supposed to start with it at the bottom of the bucket and then pour everything on top of it. So I'm gonna stir it thoroughly. And if I didn't mention it before, it might be kind of common sense to some, but not to all. Make sure that your valve at the bottom of your bottling bucket is closed. And you can always test that with some water if you're not sure uh, what the closed position is. And we are almost done siphoning here. Let me see if I can get that last little bit. It says to avoid transferring heavy sediment, which I guess is that kind of grainy, mushy looking stuff at the bottom there. Um, you know, a little sediment never killed anybody, so um, you want to kind of lift this hose up to let the, the last bit of it drain in there. So now that we are done siphoning, I'm going to take this off of here. Stir it just a little bit more to make sure that sugar is in there stirred and mixed very thoroughly because that's important to get an even distribution of the uh, priming sugar because otherwise you'll have some bottles of beer that are very carbonated and some that are not very carbonated at all. You want them to be fairly consistent. Okay. Now I'm going to take my sponge with a little sanitizer on it. I'm going to sanitize this lid again. That, that takes two hands. Now that I've sanitized the lid, I'm going to make sure it gets on the whole way on all sides. I mean, it's not going to be in here for long, but you never know. Okay. And then the carboy, we don't need that anymore. We'll just need to clean that up later. Uh, we do need that siphon, though. So, no we don't, we just need the tubing from the siphon, that's right. We need the tubing from the siphon, next, and the wand that we're going to use to fill the bottles. So I'm going to make sure everything is nice and clean and sanitized for that part of the process. And the bottle, bottle bucket is going up top here and I'm going to put my bottles underneath there for easy filling and capping purposes. One of the one of the tips that it should tell you in the instructions is to take the um, flexible tubing and run it under hot water for I don't know 30 seconds or so it makes it a lot easier to put it on the wand and the nozzle for the bottling bucket. And you see it's on there about as far as it can go up to the little notch there. So when you're ready to go you can turn it to the down position and turn it on and you put the wand in the bottle and push down and that's how babies are made. Now that's not where babies come from. Here I'll show you in a second. All right. We're ready to fill our bottles, and so just as a precaution, I'm going to go ahead and stick the wand in my first bottle here. Notice if I push down to depress the little button on the end, nothing happens because the nozzle's, the you know, that's feeding it's not on yet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that. All right. So we're ready to go. I'm going to push down. This can be a little tricky at first. You just kind of watch to see when the bottle is getting full. And you only want to release when it gets about up to the very top. Whoop. And that was overfilled. I'm trying to do two things at once. So 
This is also why you want to keep your uh, brew bucket with a little bit of sanitizer because if you need to set it down then you can just do that. So I'm going to set the phone down for a sec to do that. So now that you have your bottle that's very full, you take one of your caps that has been soaking in the sanitizer. You clip it on, you just touch it to the magnetic part of your bottle capper. This might be a two-handed process. Let's see. Oh, yep, that's probably going to be two-handed. Make sure that it's in the open position and put it down square on top of the bottle. I'm going to try and hold this with my chin while I do this so this is not going to come out well. So I try to squeeze the cap down on there and just give it like one more push to get it crimped on there just perfectly you know really tight so nothing else gets in there and you just do that 47 more times and you've got yourself 48 beers from a five gallon bucket so within my first four dozen beers I had one casualty here um, I don't know if you can see that but uh, the bottle broke as I was putting the cap on. My phone's having a hard time focusing, but of course that's only going to happen after you fill the bottle and you try and put the cap on. So some of the glass could have made it back into the bottle, so don't try and reuse that beer, just call it a loss. Um, and once you have all of your other bottles filled up or you're out of your beer from your uh, bottling bucket and you put this away in a closet or just out of the sun at about I think 72 degrees Fahrenheit for two weeks at least two weeks for it to carbonate and then uh, give it a try once you start getting below one gallon you probably want to prop the bucket up because you can see how that uh, level is going to come below where the nozzle is. So that'll help really uh, help with the flow uh, with the bottling process. Once the level starts getting pretty low in the bucket and you see the bubbles coming through in the filling wand, the party's pretty much over. I mean, you, you may be able to finish up that last bottle that you're working on, but other than that, it's it's almost done. Um, I would just kind of pull out a sample after you finish that bottle so you can check it out. Um, but after that, you're pretty much done. All right, I underfilled my brew bucket, so I probably should have added a little more water. So between breaking one of the bottles and underfilling the brew bucket, I have 45 bottles. Uh, 40, 44 bottles. So, not bad. You know, for a Mexican cerveza, this is actually a little darker than I was expecting, but all these homebrews seem to have a little cloudiness to them anyway. I guess I'm just used to something mainstream like uh, Corona, but I'm going to put it in the freezer and give it a little shot. So, it's been in the freezer for a few minutes. This is totally uncarbonated. Um... It tastes okay. It's not as good as the Kolsch so far, but uh, once it gets carbonated and fully fermented in a couple of weeks, we'll see how it is. So just remember to clean up, you know, just scrub everything down, make it nice and clean, ready for next time.